I'm Alessandra Barrett, Senior Content Editor for JOC, and I'm at LogTech19 with Glenn Jones, Global Vice President for Product Strategy of the AI-enabled digital platform Bloom Global. It's great to have you here, Glenn. Very good to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Your panel offered the provider perspective on visibility and came started from the stance of visibility being one of the most misunderstood terms in our industry. Do you think that that is just a misunderstanding of the potential that visibility has, or is it something more? Oh, it's actually something much more, I believe. It's, uh, um, you know, the technology and the processes have matured to a point now to where it's possible to get much better visibility. And there's data coming in from a, a lot of different directions now. And so, uh, you know, the, the motor carriers have onboarded ELD or telematics systems that provide a level of visibility. It's not used consistently across the industry, but it's still there. Uh, and then the ocean carriers have now have AIS to complement their reports of where status is and, and what the status of their cargo is. And uh, air carriers now have a way to report you know, similar kind of status as do the railroads. So the underlying infrastructure is there. The problem is the data isn't clean. And so it's coming in, but, but you do have multiple sources of the same data. And that provides a platform in order to be able to look at different angles on the data and be able to start cleaning the data in a better way and making much more sense out of it. So uh, it's, you know, we're at a point right now to where we can actually start leveraging that data for things much more than just purely track and trace, but it still gives you the underlying track and trace. So what's necessary to changing the focus, moving it away from this idea this, uh, of static tracing of cargo? So I you know, get into a little bit of the technology and the real enablement. Uh, in today's world, you know, we've moved, so we've been in the cloud environment or at least uh, a hosted cloud environment for a while, but now we have these new architectures as in Amazon, AWS, we have Google Cloud, uh, we have Amazon, uh, Microsoft Azure, and these have provided a way to, for companies to quickly develop new technologies, new types of software, including artificial intelligence, and the ability to be able to collect data from these different sources much faster. Uh, these are, this is a huge enablement, uh, and it, it really allows companies uh, like ours and others to explore new ways to clean the data, to look at using it in different processes. So this data that's coming in that says, where's the cargo? Now it's not just looking at shipment data and saying, where's my shipment? It's looking at the orders and it's looking at the inventory. And it's uh, now shippers and 3PLs, freight forwarders, they're able to work together in a much more collaborative way to be able to say, oh, this shipment's late. What can I do about it? Can I take it in an alternate mode of transportation? It just arrived at a, a port of Los Angeles. It's in a container. The current route is to go over rail to get to Chicago and then maybe over motor carrier to get down to Indianapolis. Uh, instead, uh, maybe it's much faster in this way to move it onto a motor carrier, putting on, put it onto a, uh, a TL, a uh, truckload, and be able to ship it direct there if we're late. Or if it's a replenishment order, there's plenty of inventory in the channel, then it's not a problem. We let it, you know, if it comes out of the, the vessel late, then it can take uh, its normal route. So you can make dynamic decisions like this based upon that underlying data as long as you believe in the data. So the sky's the limit. Where could visibility go? You can use it now in planning. And so one of the key things when you're planning your shipments and even planning your, your uh, uh, new products and items is, is, you know, where do I manufacture them? Where can I, uh, where do I have to put my manufacturing plants? Where do I put my distribution centers? And so you can take the data that you have derived through visibility and the clean data and looked at it over time and you can say, you know, uh, this particular lane across the ocean is notoriously late because it goes to the Panama Canal, things get backed up, we're heading to Savannah, and so you can use that data to do much better shipment planning. You can do, you can say, okay, if I take this route, I've got a, 
80% probability I'm going to hit my estimated time of arrival. While if I take this other route, I've got a 98%, but it's going to cost more. You know, some people you could say you could trade air versus uh, ocean, but even within ocean moves or even within rail moves, again, kind of back to this, how do I want to get my, uh, uh, my items, my uh, products from the manufacturing plants in Southeast Asia, wherever they are, or maybe in Guadalajara, into the United States or into Europe. And so one of the key things that it does, it provides much better insight into how I can ship the data. It also, on the other end of the spectrum, it's around what was the real cost? Because companies pay a fair amount these days for freight audit and pay. And so that underlying data that you get through visibility can also be used for uh, you know, removing surprises through the, pay or the invoice auditing process. You know, you can uh, now get better visibility into detention, into demerge costs, you can get better visibility into fuel surcharges, and you can get pre-approval on those kind of sur surcharges from the shipper, you know, when, when, when you can see that coming. And you can get, uh, uh, as you see that over time, through these visibility applications, you have a, a, a much better idea of what the actual cost is. So that's a couple of examples of, you know, where I think this, uh, the underlying data enabling visibility is going to take us. I've got many more. Thanks for speaking at the conference and thanks for sitting sure. down with me today. Thank you, Alessandra. I've been speaking with Glenn Jones, Global Vice President of Product Strategy for Bloom Global.